Salutations, everyone. Welcome back to Victoria 3. I'm Lord Formant, and we have a guide today on building an economy. Now, this guide is going to be focusing on buildings more than trading. Uh, by that, I mean building up your tax base, getting an industry base going. I'll do another video or guide on trade later. Okay, so like many of my other guides, this video will be divided into several chapters. Um, and uh, we're going to be using uh, the precursor to modern day South Africa, the Cape Colony, as an example. Um, I do recommend that if you're still learning the economy, you try playing this nation. Uh, the reason is this nation's economy sucks. So if you can rebuild this, you can rebuild virtually anything, even the horrific uh, Ottoman economy. Um, so the reason that South Africa here, or Cape Colony, is a difficult one is first off, you start in a deficit and you start with basically no buildings or even a very low population. So if you look at it, you are a puppet of Great Britain, meaning you owe them 20% of your income every month, basically. Uh, there's really no way to get away from this outside of revolting for them, but that just makes it a better challenge. Now, you have a couple bonuses going for you, and if you play larger nations, you will see it. You may see this elsewhere. You have gold fields. The reason South Africa, I think, is good to explain this on is because these gold fields run out given time, meaning that at some point, this nice little minting income that you have here is going to drop considerably. So, first section, how to fix your economy. And this applies to a lot of nations. The first thing to do is open up this little menu here. If you don't already have your settings set to either mouse or panning to go over tooltips, change that under settings, because you're going to want to go deep into menus to understand your nation. So the first thing here is we notice that we have a very low national revenue, and unfortunately we have a very large diplomatic pact. We can't do anything about it, meaning if we want to solve this country from insolvency, we need to do other stuff. So the first things that jump out at you is they are paying a lot for goods for military buildings and military wages. This is a problem because we don't have the economy to upkeep them. So the first thing we're going to do here, and um, most nations have an overly large army for what they can afford, is to go through and to first off to get rid of naval bases. Now, I don't recommend this if you're going to potentially be fighting naval battles, but as South Africa Cape Colony, we have Great Britain as an overlord, um, or rather, I think it's technically the UK at this point, um, meaning, no, it's Great Britain, meaning at this point, we can just kind of sit back and let them win the wars for us. Now, we're also going to do the same thing here to the barracks. We're going to lower this all the way down. Now, it does warn you that by lowering it, that you could turn individuals into radicals, it's not a huge issue here. So we're going to also do the same over here. The reason we're doing that is to cut that cost. You notice now we have a positive one because we're not spending any money on military um, buildings or wages. Now, on the other hand, we can't launch any wars, but considering the only people we're likely to fight for some time are natives. And just like that, we have, quote, quote, solved the economy problem. Now, the reality is this number is going to disappear immediately as well once we start constructing stuff. So just for the sake of helping people play this nation, we're going to take a slight detour here, and we are going to go and get them colonizing. So in order to colonize, you need to reform your government. If you include the armed forces, you can now pass the colonial affairs law. And you have two options here. Um, this is going into more colonization than I really want to, but colonial resettlement will help you grow your population in unincorporated territories faster, which is South Africa you have an issue with, but colonial explo exploitation also um, basically means that there's less money paid in that area. The reality is, for South Africa, that is a population problem. You want colonial resettlement. When that's done, you're going to go up here and establish a con colony in your northern cape, which you own half of, and it'll start spreading up that way. Dor Zulu, Nambia, and the others, they all have malaria. You can't colonize them. The reason that's important is these guys is as this expands, it will take over these other provinces to the north, and your gold fields will um, continually grow. Plus, you need to fully take over the area 
before you can fully get all the productivity out of it. The other things to do as this nation are to incorporate your states nearby. The reason we're incorporating the states is because if you have an unincorporated state, you don't get uh, tax money and stuff from it. So this will boost your income, but it will also cause bureaucracy problems. Another thing we're going to do, and I don't recommend doing this lightly, is we're actually going to add a consumption tax at some point as the game continues. Probably we'd want to add it on something high up like uh, either services or clothes, which tend to get you a lot of money. For now, we have a consumption tax on grain. It's not making us a lot of money, but it helps. Other various things we can do if we want to is if we look at the budget here, we could slash government wages or military wages, making sure that we have our medium tax level at a minimum. Some nations, and it buckles my mind, the game starts you with low taxes or even very low, so fixing your economy by boosting it up makes a huge difference. Now, the higher up you go, the less legitimacy and the more radicals you get. And considering our standard of living is going to be changing very rapidly in a negative direction for a while, probably not a good idea to tax heavier. Other things we're going to do without getting too deep into an economic stuff is we're going to find some goods that we can export. In this case, we're going to export some grain, turn it on to productivity to try and export the most we can. We're going to do that a couple times for fish and grain as well. The rest of these resources, yes, we can do uh, dye, and it is worth throwing down a couple dye as well. The problem is, as you build that up, you lose your bureaucracy, meaning you have a tax penalty. Right now, we're going to lose 56% of our tax, um, which means we'll go negative, meaning we've got other adjustments to make moving forward. Now that we have solved the economy problem, and we've created new ones for ourselves. Now we can start on actually building up. So let's look at what Cape Town starts with. And this is something you should get in the habit of doing. So up here in Northern Cape, we have gold fields where the vast majority of our income is coming from at this point. We have a livestock ranch here. It's fully used. We don't have a lot of peasants here, so we can't build too much in this region and effect, expect to have it fully staffed. We look over here at Eastern Cape. We have a wheat farm, a livestock ranch, but we have a decent amount of peasants to use. And finally, in Cape Colony itself, we have a trade center, we have a fishing wharf, wheat farm, and a port, and nothing else. However, we do have a large amount of peasants, so this is going to be the area we want to build up first, followed by um, Eastern Cape, and then finally Northern Cape. So first off, we have managed to create a bureaucracy imbalance by starting up several trade routes. So, and this is just a general tactic indeed, is you don't really want the bureaucracy to be negative. So we're going to actually throw down building a government administration in our capital area. But before we do that, we're going to focus on resources. Now, Victoria 3 has some weird rules about auto construction. In order to auto construct something, you have to, or auto expand, technically, you have to have it built first, meaning we can't just order random building of these resource buildings, meaning that in order to actually auto expand them, if they're profitable or to some degree to fully understand how profitable they are, we want to build level ones of each of them. Now, if you hover over them, they do tell you what the predicted earnings are. Not entirely accurate, especially if you're going to export the um, resources. But it does tell you that if we build tea here, we will make money. Whereas if we build cotton here, we're likely to lose money. Now, building the building doesn't cost us anything outside of the resources to create it. If it becomes profitable, it will build up. And in fact, in South Africa, for some time, you're going to want to build more buildings than you have population to work them in hopes of getting some nice migrations. The other thing to remember is your economy is going to grow roughly at the same rate as your industrial technology does, meaning that despite the benefit of having a strong military, if you're going to be trying to build up an economy, this is the area you're going to neglect the most. Society, on the other hand, actually has some benefits for South Africa. But for, to start, we're going to look over here at technology. Since a lot of our resources are agricultural based, at some point we're going to want to do in intensive agriculture. 
However, to start, since we've got a gold mine and minting is a good portion of our income, we're going to focus on central banking, which will give us 10% more from it. The other option is we focus on central archives, but this requires us to actually have a government administrative building, which if you look here, we don't actually have, we're needing to build one. So the first order of business for us is either to get rid of the trade routes to get some money back or build a government admin building. I recommend building the government admin building anyway. Okay, fast forwarding a bit. We are now here with the government administration about to be completed. Since we were sitting on a large reserve of cash and it was positive for this time, we now have a nice gold reserve, which we'll need to continue building up our nation. So first off, now that that is done, as it builds up, we should see this bureaucracy penalty go down. On the other hand, we're going to have to um, consider importing paper at some point. Um, but that's getting a little bit more into trade than we're going to. Suffice to say, now that we finish this, you'll notice that we're still building really slowly, um, but now we're not receiving as immense of a bureaucracy penalty. And the other option we could have done, and what we're going to do now, is to go down to development in our main area here, Cape Colony, and build a construction sector. Now, this is going to take positive money. So um, at the end of this, we're going to be negative. On the other hand, it will speed up our building a fair amount which is what we need. The downside of this is then we have to quickly make some new sources of revenue in order not to go broke. And while this video, of course, as I've said, is focusing on the building, you also have to manage trade as well to get some decent income. So we've also completed central baking, which is good. And now I'm gonna start central archives so that I can increase the bureaucracy as well. Now that we've completed our construction area here, um, doo -doo -doo, there we go, construction sector. We now have another option. We can change from building wooden buildings to building iron frame buildings. I would not rec necessarily recommend it at this point because, well, it costs a lot of money and we don't have those resources to make it easier. Whereas right now we're just building with wooden stuff. It's decently cheap, even though we're losing money. But now you'll see that slowly our construction value is going up and we can build more stuff. So if we look over here at Cape Colony, you'll see that we're building a cotton plantation. Then we're going to build livestock and tea as well. From this, we're going to just start getting a functioning economy and it takes a long time. Part of the reason I recommend you start as this nation rather than a other nation uh, who with more industry is this way you have to actually pick and be very careful what you build when you build it. The long-term goal, and this is a strange one, is to build up your urban center. Now, why do you want to build up an urban center? Well, the urban center has some bonuses. It gives you services and it also does a decent employment. You don't have any at the start. You get to it by building your urbanization up to 100. Every building you build has a different level. Cape Colony administration here gave 20. The Trade Center gives 20 as well. Most other stuff outside of factories gives five. Um, that's important to know because you want to ideally hit 100 in these states because it just helps a little bit having one of those areas. So now we've completed the cotton plantation. You'll notice right now it's not making any money. That's because it hasn't hired anybody. Now that it's hiring people, it is making money. And if we look down here at Cape Colony, you'll see that this peasant's number is going down as they slowly get hired to work on the cotton plantation, which is a good thing because peasants don't help you that much. They're not gainfully employed. So it's not particularly useful for you. Also, ignore these war goals. That's just Great Britain fighting other people. And so now we're going to complete the livestock ranches, and then we're going to complete the tea plantations. While that's being done, let's look at our buildings. Because changing your building, what production methods they use, is very important. So if we look up here at wheat fields, we're doing vineyards. We could do citrus orchids or maintain a single crop, but that would cost us money. But next to it, this Harvesting tools, while it would cost us money, it would use up tools. Right now, we don't have any tools and we don't have an issue with laborers, so we can safely stick with 
an ox-powered plow. Livestock ranches, open-air stockyards, or we could switch it to butchering tools, but we would need tools. Now, we can buy them from the market, but it's probably better in the long run if we actually build it ourselves. Now, if we look down here at the logging camps, however, we might actually make a change. Simple forestry generates wood. If we were to move to a sawmill, we'll get more. We'll come back to this once we actually build the lumber yard. But outside of that, most of our other buildings we have don't need to change. This one's already started upgrading as well. Urban areas, considering we only have two urban buildings, there's not much going on. But we're going to go over here from simple organization. We're going to change to a filing cabinet, which now means our bureaucracy is positive, meaning we're getting the full amount of taxes we can. You'll notice we're losing money now due to construction and the government wages. That's unavoidable. In order to make money, you have to spend money. And we didn't have any money to spend in the first place, which is why we built up that very large reserve by constructing first the government administration center. So now we're building livestock ranches. It's slowly getting employed. If you're really curious, you can watch all these numbers go up. It really doesn't help you that much, but it's nice to know they exist. And T is almost constructed. Now, we could get into a whole decent more thing of what to build, when to build it. We're not going to cover that. But suffice to say, the English love their T, meaning T is a decent thing to build in your colonies early on, because usually you can trade it to the British. In which case, since we're part of the British market, it goes there immediately. So now the tea plantation is built. As it gets more employees, the productivity is rising. Great thing about being one of Britain's colonies is that you get technology nice and easy from them. So now we've completed all of that. Um, if we want to keep growing, we're going to now start working on the production. In long term, if you were playing these guys for real, you might want to focus into like education or even work your way down to quinine and then further down to malaria prevention to help you colonize faster. If you were to do that pharmaceuticals, then that would work as well. But we're going to go with production. For now, we're going to just finish off mechanical tools. And if we keep an eye on this income here, you'll notice it's not making too many decent changes. Slowly, it'll go down as our land becomes more profitable. And now we've got intensive agriculture. So the tea plantations are doing well. The wheat farm's not making as much money, but it's still positive, but it slowly was losing cash reserves, which isn't a good sign, but there's not much we can do about it. This is where the kind of free market that exists in this game comes into play. Suffice to say, though, since most of our buildings are making money, it's a good sign. And then we're about to have the logging camps. Now, logging camps, arguably, I should have built them first because it's going to generate wood, meaning it will be then slightly cheaper for us to construct stuff, assuming it affects the overall large British market, which can take quite a time because it's a big market. But as you'll see, the construction goods is kind of fluctuating at the point of going down. The problem is everyone else is buying the wood. But now we can go back to logging camps and look at the production method. So we're right now prioritizing softwood. Softwood is less valuable, but it's used in more things. Hardwood is slightly more valuable, although we produce less wood. We're going to swap over. And now we can look at simple forestry or sawmills. Sawmills require tools and they imply machinists at the cost of laborers. It's actually worth us doing. We're now going to have a slight problem with uh, qualifications, but guess what? The reality is we're an educated population. It's very quickly going to fill out as well. And now it's making decent money. Now, it didn't solve our construction costs that much because we're part of the British market. But if you're an independent nation, it would help. And just like that, we've got a decent amount of employment going on in Cape Colony. You could continue developing Cape Colony, which wouldn't be a bad thing or in the case of what we're going to do here, we're going to start getting a bit of an income started in the Eastern Cape. It's less of a priority because this state has not been incorporated, meaning you could freely ignore it. Um, but if you do this here, you'll get more resources to trade and you could continue down that line as well. 
And that would put you on a pretty good path to building an economy as any country. So why are we not building factories? Well, let's talk about the difference between resource buildings and factory buildings. And we've already talked a little bit about it, and some of you may already know this. If we look at, well, let's go back to our logging camps here. If we use simple forestry, we don't use any tools and we use basically laborers, meaning if we've got a low educated populace or no access to cheap tools, it might be more profitable to do it that way than build sawmills. Now sawmills give us more wood. So if selling the wood makes more money than the increased cost of buying the tools, it's worth doing. Thankfully, the game tells you that nice little substitution which is quite handy. The reason we're not building any factories at the start is if we look at a factory, um, food industries doesn't count. Let's look at, say, furnitures, okay? Furnitures are nice and simple. Um, the downside is what they require to produce stuff. So in order to produce furniture, you need to buy fabric and wood which is okay, and then you produce furnitures, this is a decent building to build in a growing one. But if we were to try and focus instead on building, say, an arms industry, the arms industry requires a lot more stuff. It requires iron and hardwood, for which we've turned our lumber camp into building some hardwood, but we don't have any source of iron outside and buying it on the market. And if you were to look at it, well, the price of iron in the British market is expensive, so it's probably not a good idea. We probably wouldn't make much money. It takes a while to construct. Also, if for some reason there was a war or a shortage in the British market, like we declare war on the British to try and get our independence, all of a sudden our industry would crash. In order to build factories, you can buy them abroad, and it might be worth doing if you don't have access to resources. Um, like you're playing Prussia, the Netherlands, or someone like Belgium or Luxembourg, which don't have a lot of natural resources, uh, you could build these and then buy the resources. You just have to be careful who you're buying from. In the case of South Africa, though, we actually have access to a decent amount of resources, coal mines, iron mines, um, to start, as well as gold. So we could build theoretically to them. The downside is they also require highly qualified staff, so it takes time to build up. So the predicted amount is we're going to lose money if we build it. Not entirely accurate, but it's usually better off building your base resource buildings. They're cheap, they're quick to construct, they provide very low urban levels, but they provide resources, decent wages, they'll pull your population standard of living up a bit, and then you can use it to export which of course is like the name of the game almost. It should almost be called Trading Simulator 3 rather than Victoria 3. So another feature that most of you should know, but some of you may not, is if you click on a building, you can order an auto expand and it tells you the qualifications in order to expand it. Um, turning it on is not a bad idea. It can also be turned on from the building page. If you go over here, click it till it's gold, all buildings in this group will be automatically expanded. Um, it's a decent thing to turn on. The downside is it doesn't necessarily prioritize the buildings you want. Um, so you might have to pick more profitable ones. And early on, you can run across some annoying issues where the AI starts building stuff that you don't particularly want. So let's talk about what to build, when to build it. So the first thing you want to consider is do I have any construction capacity and can I support a higher level construction capacity? A mistake you could make, and I mentioned it in one of my tip videos, is building too many construction sectors. If you look at it, the construction sector alone is pretty much crashing our economy. Um, that is, unfortunately, the reality is that construction goods are expensive. So instead of building that, uh, build it, of course, if you can afford it. The first thing you should try and do is correct any bureaucracy shortage you have because not being able to tax your population is a problem. Now, some states like the Qing or the Ottomans or someone like Russia might struggle a bit with their bureaucracy. Um, it's not the worst thing having negative bureaucracy, but you don't want to get, get it low too low because then that's going to kill your tax incomes. And early on, outside of trade, that's how you're going to make money. So what you should build, and 
these are not in any optimized order per se. Um, the first thing that you should consider is a logging camps. The reality is if you've got your own little separate market, a logging camp should lower the price of wood to make it cheaper for you to build the other buildings. We didn't do it in this case because we're part of a larger market. Um, but if you have your own market, it's a great thing to build a logging camp or two. The other thing to build is consider building is fishing wars and wheat farms. Reason being, they're quick, they're easy to build, and they help improve your population standard of living as they lower the cost of that good in your area. Food is pretty important. People tend to starve without food. Yes, people die when they starve. Not so much in this game. In this game, they tend to migrate away more often. After you've got your wheat going, which is never a bad resource, you can usually trade it to somebody in the world, and your logging camp, which you could even level up a couple times so long as it's still making money, it's time then to start thinking about your other buildings. I recommend doing resources first if you don't have a great already existing economy, but if you've got a humming economy like you're the British, factories can be quite useful as well with throwing in resources periodically as things get expensive. So which resources do you build? Well, this depends a bit on your trading network and the obsessions of your pops and others, which we're not going to cover here. But if you look at this, it will tell you what the predicted earnings are. You notice it's saying that there's a negative predicting earnings if we expand it, but the reality is the building's making money. So if we were to grow it, we'd probably still be making money. So don't always rely on the prediction. Um, to determine whether or not you're going to buy stuff. It's accurate, but only to some degree. The next thing you should really consider building is finding a cash crop like cotton, tea, opium, bananas, anything that you can build quick and easy and building that. Now, if you've got a decent level of technology and you're getting to advanced agriculture, it is actually worth going out of your way to build a livestock ranchers. The reason being, is at some point when you level up your um, farm farm production through intensive agriculture, you're going to start requiring fertilizer to grow more grain or other resources. The easiest source of fertilizer is actually building um, livestock ranches and putting them on intensive grazing because then they produce a small level of fertilizer, which will help keep costs under control until you get chemical plants to help lower it again. And if this sounds very confusing, it's meant to be. So hopefully this simplifies things. A very good combo is a leveled up uh, wheat farm as well as leveled up livestock ranches. It has a nice balance to it. Um, it's a great combo. And early on, livestock ranches also give you food as well as fabric, which you do need when you build as well. So wheat, wood, livestock, cash crop. The reality is you're probably going to want to build one of each of your base level agriculture or other resource buildings that you can just so you can get a rough idea of if the building's profitable and then you can turn on the very nice auto expand so you don't have to be as overly focused on the economy as before if you're a small nation though you're going to micro your economy the whole game be aware of that if you're a large nation you still need to keep an eye on it because um, it can get a little out of hand so that is pretty much it for the guide. So to review, first off, check your money balance. Make sure that you're positive or at least close to positive. Getting rid of any expenses you can. You might even need to lower some of your government buildings. Construction ones, if you start with too many, can be expensive. Obviously, we got rid of naval bases in the barracks. We can build them back when we get richer. Um, Check your consumption taxes. Might be worth throwing down a consumption tax there to try and not be negative. Be aware that everyone you pass costs you authority and does hurt the standard of living inside your country. Due to many, your population might revolt or you'll run out of authority. But it's a nice way to solve a budget shortfall. The reality is, though, you need to use the money you're getting from a consumption tax to develop your nation. Otherwise, it's almost not worth doing. Um, unless obviously you're in a war or something. Sadly, there's no war taxes to pass. Um, afterwards, solve, try to solve any bureaucracy shortfalls you may or may not have. Then start building up a reserve of money for a large building spree if you're positive. You could theoretically just build like one building and hopefully if you're not negative, that's great. If you are negative, can be worth slowing up your building for a while. 
to build up a reserve. The last thing you want to do early on is fall into debt because then you have to pay interest and it tends to make a bad situation worse unless events change like you find more gold mines, which will happen periodically as Cape Colony until your gold fields go away and you got to build gold mines. Um, afterwards, it's usually worth focusing on the stuff that helps you construct buildings. So first off, food. Make sure your population isn't starving. You can always export it. It's rarely a bad thing to have excess wheat or fish. Then moving into wood. Um, then further on into livestock ranches if you're still on the base construction method. If we were to look at swapping over, you'll see that now the big stuff is you require tools and iron. If you're requiring tools and iron, build an iron mine. It's worth getting that going as well, and maybe even build a tooling workshop or expand your existing one. If you can, getting to the second level of the construction can massively boost your income. This gives you two construction. This is five. It also makes it slightly more efficient to build. Um, the downside is it costs a lot more. But it can usually be worth building, upgrading your building method rather than building a new construction building. Moving further on, resources versus factories. It's usually a good idea to build factories you have the resources from um, rather than building factories you can't support. Exceptions might be military factories if you're going to go to war, um, just to keep the costs down. Uh, in terms of resources, try and figure out which one is going to make you the most money. Uh, cash crops, tea is good, opium if you can sell it to China. The reality is there's a lot of really good stuff. Cotton is decent if you're going to then build uh, clothing factories and on and on and on and on. So either build a construction building, fall by wheat, wood, fish, iron, anything that you need to build your buildings, then focus on actually making money. Uh, the reality is you'll probably have enough to get your base in infrastructure going. Um, from what I can tell, the game creators did a decent job that everybody, if you get rid of all your expenses, can usually slowly start to build your economy up. A slight tip I will mention um, is if you are going bankrupt, as in you have a full load of debt and you have no reserves, if you're having an investment pool, what you can do rather than declaring bankruptcy is if the principal fills up all the way, you'll get, oh, you're in a deficit and it'll disappear and reappear like every month um, sometimes. But what you can do is if you go to the building page, you can pause construction. And then once you hit the deficit, if you wait a month, the little uh, investing pool here, if you're assuming you're getting investments, will build up just the tiniest bit. Then if you rush down here, you can then unpause the construction. And even though you don't have enough money to buy a full month of supply, you'll get a full month of supply. So you can kind of bootstrap your way to building a building. I don't recommend you do it, but if you're in complete debt and you're still not collapsed, you can in fact finance one month of construction every two months using that investment pool. It's kind of hilarious and it takes a long time to build anything, but it does work. And hopefully uh, that will be it for this guide and this will help you guys play the game. Uh, I've managed to rebuild my economy and survive as the Ottomans. I've managed to do the Qing. I've managed to obviously play as most of the main Europeans and make money. Cape Colony is rough due to that fee you pay the British. But honestly, if you can build this up and slowly grow it into a country of several million people within like 30 or 40 years, you can pretty much play and rebuild anybody. It's quite exciting. Just remember, building an industry to build buildings is usually more important than trying to build advanced technologies and factories. Think of it as a, a pyramid. You have to build the base before you build the pinnacle, and there's a lot supporting the top of a pyramid, which is all your basic resources and laborers, rather than the few people, specialists, building a cannon, for example. Anyway, thank you guys all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it helped you. If you've got any comments and other stuff, leave them below. And like and subscribe if you have not done so. I do greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.